So I think that the inflammation in the gut is mainly occurring because of different repetitive mechanisms. First, we know that the gut microbiota are really important to maintain, for instance, the gut buyer. But the gut buyer is not only the gut microbes. It's, this is also um, involved the involvement of epithelial cells, proliferation, tight junctions, and also from the host, the production of antimicrobial peptides, for instance. And all together, when there is an alteration of one or several of these specific factors, I think that this will trigger the onset of inflammation. But for instance, in our hands, we have de demonstrated that changes in the gut microbiota may be the, the key factor leading to the modification of the gut biofunction function at the level of, for instance, of the mucus layer thickness, but also the mucus composition. Changes in the gut biofunction function and gut permeability is a cause of or a consequence? I still have no clear answer to this question, but my hypothesis is that, for instance, in the context of obesity and high fat feeding, we have previously uh, demonstrated that fat feeding increases the absorption of some markers, of some compounds coming from the gut microbiota, namely the lipopolysaccharides, for instance. And this is completely physiological. I mean, in physiological conditions, we are absorbing these kind of factors that are pro-inflammatory. The more fat you eat, the more LPS you will absorb. And then it might be possible that in turn, the increased LPS in the blood will disrupt the tight junctions, leading to a sort of vicious cycle leading to the leaky gut and finally increasing and maintaining this low-grade inflammatory tone. Because in my, my point of view, um, it is really difficult to uh, demonstrate whether only the host inflammation may be involved in the degradation of the epithelial cells layer. I think that both mechanisms exist. So first, I think that might be the absorption of some factors involved in the low-grade inflammatory tone that will disrupt the tight junctions and then increasing this vicious circle. The permanent increase in the low-grade inflammatory tone might be involved in the development of insulin resistance, for instance. I'm still thinking about obesity and diabetes, where this low-grade inflammatory tone may contribute to the increased macrophages filtration in the adipose tissue. They, this inflammation may also contribute to changes in hepatic uh, inflammatory tone, leading to hepatic steatosis, but also alteration and steatohepatitis, finally. And there are also data suggesting that this low-grade inflammatory tone may also change the, the response from uh, our gut, I mean, the gut-to-brain axis. Uh, in other words, if you change the gut-to-brain axis in the context in appetite regulation, for instance, uh, you will also have less reward or a decrease of this reward because of the inflammation, thereby changing the food intake behavior and maybe also contributing to the increased body weight gain and fat mass. So altogether, the changes in the low-grade inflammatory tone may impact on different organs. And I didn't spoke about atherosclerosis, but this is also a key uh, marker that might be directly targeted by this permanent increase in low-grade inflammatory tone.